Hi there. In the short answer series, we take a topic and just ask two short questions about it. This is a macro video. We're going to look at the negative interest rates. So in some Eurozone countries, both the nominal and the real interest rate has become negative. Here are two questions. Question one, using a numerical example, distinguish between nominal and real interest rates. And question two, explain how negative interest rates might impact on two macroeconomic objectives. So question one, using a numerical example, distinguish between nominal and real interest rates. Well, the nominal interest rate, for example, on a loan, is the money rate of interest on savings and loan products. The real interest rate, on the other hand, is the money or the nominal rate of interest minus the inflation rate. So here's a quick numerical example. If the nominal interest rate or the yield on a 10-year government bond is 0.6%, so the government is borrowing in nominal terms at 0.6% for 10 years, and the 10-year expected inflation rate is 1.6%, people expect inflation to average 1.6% per year over the next 10 years, then the real yield is the money rate of interest, 0.6%, minus inflation, 1.6%, which gives minus 1%, a negative real yield, because the nominal yield or the nominal interest rate is less than the inflation rate. Here are some current central bank interest rates around the world. You can see, for example, the UK policy rate as of February 2017 is 0.25%. Uh, in the United States, it's 0.75%. It's zero in Europe, set by the European Central Bank. But notice here that the Bank of Japan sets negative policy interest rates, minus 0.1%. And the Swiss National Bank has set an interest rate of minus 0.75%. These are, of course, nominal interest rates, but negative. So question two, explain how negative interest rates might impact on two macro objectives. Well, we've just seen that negative policy interest rates apply at the moment in some countries, particularly Japan, Switzerland, and also Sweden and Denmark. That negative interest rates are really designed to get commercial banks to lend more because with negative interest rates, if they hold money in the central bank, for example, they'll have to pay interest just for holding money on deposit with a central bank. So it's designed to incentivize commercial banks actually to reduce those balances and lend out more. Negative interest rates might also bring about, as we've seen in the previous question, a fall in real interest rates, which could stimulate investment by businesses and help an economy escape a liquidity trap and perhaps return to, to faster, stronger escape velocity economic growth. So two key objectives. One is that negative interest rates are really designed to stimulate investment and then feed through to cyclical growth of GDP. The second key objective that they are designed to affect is the trade balance. A negative interest rate is partly expected to cause an outflow of hot money on the financial account of the balance of payments and that then brings about a depreciation of the exchange rate. Now, if the exchange rate becomes more competitive following a depreciation, in theory, this will help to improve the net trade balance, net exports minus imports. And that should help to stimulate both aggregate demand and also short-term growth. However, that does require the Marshall learner condition to hold, namely that the sum of the price elasticity of demand for exports and imports must both together uh, be greater than one. So that's the short answer on negative interest rates.